Good morning. It's wonderful to be with you this worship event. I just want to share with you a song that means an awful lot to me. The poetry goes like this. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. Jesus, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all of your church. Spirit, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify your name in each of our lives. The power of those words indicate the value and also the purpose of our gathering today. There's, there are two passages of scripture that I want to open up this morning with you. And I leave them with you because they highlight in a wonderful way God's truth and command in our lives. This is Father's Day. And I'm reminded of the fifth commandment, the connecting commandment between all of the all of the ten that are there. Honor your father and mother as the Lord commands you, so that you might have a long life in the place where God places you. In Proverbs chapter 3, we read these verses. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your understanding. In all your ways, be directed by him and he will show you the path you should take in a few moments our pastor will come and share with us you will hear a variety of people take part in the service this morning and it will be focused on our understanding that God's Word gives us precise directions as to how we should live let us pray Heavenly Father as we come together as a community of faith help us to understand that you are here with us and that these worship events are absolutely vital for us. We commit our time to you, knowing that you will bless us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hi friends, Miss Edna here. And today I have a special friend with me. This is Jake. He lives on the farm in the picture there. And Jake is quite shy, but earlier he was telling me about when he was just a puppy. One day he got into some trouble. He was digging a hole in the farmer's garden there and he just wanted to bury a bone, but the farmer caught him and he wasn't very happy. And Jake got scared and so he ran and hid. But later that day, he heard the farmer calling for him, didn't you? Yeah. And so he crept out of his hiding place, and when the farmer saw him, he ran up to him and gave him a big hug. He was so happy to see you, wasn't he, Jake? Yeah. Well, that reminds me of the story that I have to tell you today. It's called The Lost Son. It's from the Bible. And uh, while I'm telling the story, Jake, maybe you should back to your farm just to see if the farmer needs you for anything. So if you want to say bye to the boys and girls, and uh, we'll see you again soon, I hope. Bye. <laughs> so while Jake's gone, I have this little story for you. And the story is from the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. <clears throat> and it's called The Lost Son. If I can get my book straight here. <laughs> Jesus told another parable about God's love. There was a man who had two sons, said Jesus. He owned a big farm. <clears throat> the page is turned here. <laughs> His youngest son did not want to work anymore. He wanted to travel and have fun, so he asked his father for his share of the family money. The son got the money, he packed his things, and left. He couldn't wait to see the world, but his family was very sad to see him go. <clears throat> At first, he had fun spending the money. He bought expensive clothes and ate fa fancy food, but soon all the money was gone. He had to go to work and he got a job with a pig farmer. He was so hungry that even the pig's food looked good. The son wanted to go back home. He said, I will tell my father I am sorry for what I have done. I do not deserve to be called his son. Maybe he'll let me work for him. <clears throat> The father saw his son coming down the road, his eyes filled with tears as he ran to greet him. The son said, please forgive me, dad. That night they had a big party. The father exclaimed, my son was lost, but now he's found. <clears throat> Jesus explained his story. God is like this father. He is full of love and joy when people who are lost come back to him. And that is so true uh, with our earthly fathers as well. If we do something wrong, they don't stop loving us. They love us still, no matter what we've done. And the same with our Heavenly Father, God. If we do something that we shouldn't, He doesn't stop loving us. He loves us all the time. Uh, but He wants us to understand that what we did was not right and that uh, we should try to do better the next time. Well, today is Father's Day. And so I thought maybe you'd like to make a little craft for your dad. And it's, it's not real hard, but you do need a piece of paper. And I have a piece of blue paper today. And what I've done at the top, I cut two slits in the blue paper. Just leave about two inches in the middle. And cut in so that both sides have a bit of a cut in them. Then I'm going to use my glue stick and just put a little dab of glue kind of close to the middle here and glue one side down. And I'll show you here in just a minute. Glue both sides down so that when it's glued, it kind of looks like a shirt collar there. I also cut out a necktie <laughs> and on the back of it I printed our memory verse for today which is Ephesians 5 1 follow God's example as dearly loved children 
and we are all dearly loved by God and by our earthly fathers as well. So I'm going to glue that onto my shirt. And I think I have to put a little more glue on my collar here to hold it down. Okay, so we have, we have our shirt made here now with the necktie. Whoops, <laughs> that collar doesn't want to stay. But it's, it's just a glue stick and you may have to hold it for a few minutes. Now, when your dad looks at his nice picture, he can just lift the tie and read the memory verse. And then on the back, I wrote a special note to my dad. And on it, I put, to the best dad in the world. You can put whatever you want on the back of yours. You could just say, I love you, dad, and put your name on it. But this is my message to my dad, because I thought he was the best dad in the world. So that's a little craft you can do later today if you have time. You can also put a couple of buttons here uh, if you want to make it look more like a shirt or a button down here for the shirt. But I uh, just wanted to remind you it's Father's Day and you should tell your dads how much you love them. So I hope you have a great day with your dads and um, we'll see you again soon. God bless you. Bye for now. This morning I'm reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying. As he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and don't let us yield to temptation. Then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, Don't bother me, the door is locked for the night, and my family and I are all in bed, I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we can come before you, that we can call you Father, and that we can ask for what we want and what we need, and you will hear our prayer, and you will answer us. This morning, Father, we think of all those that are fathers, and we thank you for those men in our lives. Just pray a special blessing upon them today. Father, I pray for those who are fatherless this morning that you would give them strength as well. That this might not be a, a sad day, but a day of being able to rejoice um, in, the, in the male figures in our life. Father, this morning we thank you. Thankful that um, the province has opened up and we can actually gather to, to celebrate and hug our fathers today and our family. We thank you for that. It's been a long few months. 
And many people are struggling. And so, God, today I just pray that you would have your touch on each one. Father, for those who have been working essentially since the pandemic started, and those just starting to go back to work, and those who aren't able to work, I pray that you would watch over and protect each one. And pray especially that you would protect both their mental and spiritual health during this trying time. Father, we pray for our medical officers of health, uh, in particular Dr. Strang in Nova Scotia, that you would guide him as he goes through the statistics and the, the evidence um, and tries to uh, make recommendations that are in the best interest of, of all those in the province. We pray also for our political leaders, our premier and our prime minister, Father, that you would give them wisdom, that you would guide them in the decisions they make. Um, we just pray that you would continue to um, just watch over us, God, during this trying time when we can't get together. God, we know that despite all that's been going on, that you are with us that you love us, and we thank you. We thank you for Jesus who came and not only gave his life for us, but also showed us the way to live and taught us how to pray. And so, God, I pray that you would continue to be with us now, that you would bless the ministry of your word today and just be with us. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, greetings, and welcome to our Father's Day message. My topic today is what it means to call God Father. This topic is important because when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he said that they should address God as Father, and hence we have the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven. Three reasons highlight why we call God Father. The first one is that God is the Father of creation. You see, creation is not the product of an accident of history as suggested by the scientific community with what is called the Big Bang Theory. That theory may not necessarily be contradictory to the creation account of the Bible, as the scientific community want to suggest. At its simplest core, the Big Bang Theory says the universe blinked violently into existence. This violent explosion is what created an enormous fireball out of which the universe emerged. That there may have been a violent blink to me describes something like a super earthquake. I don't necessarily see any problem there. But what the science wants us to believe is that the most violent earthquake ever to happen produced extremely good results. That is not what earthquakes do. So I have a problem there. That is like saying when the forever predicted big earthquake for Southern California happens, that it will build new high-rise buildings and assemble new planes for Boeing and Airbus in the process. That simply does not make sense. But hear me, I am not saying there was no Big Bang. There could have been. When God started to create, there was likely a majestic cataclysmic display of power that could have produced a Big Bang. What the scientists describe as a sudden expansion of matter, energy, and space from a single point is not necessarily contradictory to the Bible's account of creation. What is to stop anyone from thinking this is the point at which God begins to bring the earth into being? He created something from nothing, and what might have sounded like 
what that might have sounded like is anyone's guess. It could have been a big bang a million times bigger than the thunder and lightning that frightens you and me. My point, however, is this. The Bible has a description for the result in Genesis 1, which says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then hear this, the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. This is the kind of result you get when there is an earthquake or tornado. There is chaos, destruction, cacophony, and all kinds of confusion. The Bible statement of a void and formless earth fits into that chaotic state. And it stayed that way until God began to say, let there be light. And then there was light. The creator began to work or continued to work. It is this work of creation that has produced the world as we know it today, not an accident of history. Creation is the work of an eternal designer whom we know as God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything came to be because he created it. That is why God is the father of creation. So we adore the God of creation and worship him as Lord of the universe. He is the Lord God Almighty. We also carry a stewardship and thanksgiving responsibility for the earth. And if we are blessed with resources from this earth in abundance, let us remember the words of Psalm 24 verse 1, that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Then we will hold those resources with gratitude to the eternal God. That makes me want to pause right here, right now, to give thanks to God. But why else do we call him Father? The Apostle Paul has the answer in Ephesians 1 verse 3, which reads as follows. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. What a statement from the great Apostle Paul. He clearly identifies God as Father of our Lord Jesus. And I know this is complicated, and there is no time in such a brief broadcast to unravel all the mysteries here. The ancient church fathers grappled with this mystery and left us the following explanation. The Son was never created. He is the begotten of the Father, eternally begotten. That means he originates with the Father, but not in a sense where he once didn't exist. Begotten conveys the idea that Christ depends on the Father for his status as the Son. Let me summarize it like this. God is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, not by birth, but by relationship, purpose, and mission. God, who is Trinity, sent his Son Jesus, the Son who was the begotten one, not the created one. Yes, I know that's complicated and potentially confusing, and we don't have to figure out the mystery. Not at all, but we can be sure of this, that God is the Father of creation, and that he is also the Father of our Lord Jesus. As a result, Jesus called God his Father. Jesus depended on his Father, and Jesus came to do his Father's will. That's what it means to call him Father. It means to obey him as Jesus did. It means to do the Father's will as Jesus did. It means to depend on him as Jesus did. And if Jesus, the greatest being to ever walk on this earth, depended on his Father, how much more us, lesser mortals, do we need to depend 
on the eternal father. God was the father of the greatest being to walk on earth. I want to join that family. I want that father. I want the perfect father. Don't you? Well, here is the good news. You do not have to trade in your earthly father to enjoy the joy of the eternal father. You can have them both and be able to say with meaning, as Jesus did, my father and your father. John 20, 17. Now, how do we make God our individual father? Well, that is the subject of my final point. John 1 verse 12 helps us as follows. To those who received him and believed in his name, to them he gave the right to become children of God. What a position of privilege this is, to be able to call him father. He is not just Lord of the earth. He is my father and your father. Children are entitled to some things. The passage we read says if earthly fathers who are evil know how to give good gifts to children, how much more does the heavenly father? The inference is clear. Whether it is procreation or better, whether it is protection or provision, the heavenly father is better in all respects. This is good news, beloved ones. Our God is a dependable God. He is adequate for life's every need. He is also the greatest cheerleader. But I know we tend to feel lost easily. Many people have felt that way during this COVID phase. There is even a sense of too many bad things happening worldwide with the pandemic in the world of the Nova Scotia disasters of April and May. Has God forgotten about his creation? God never forgets. Remember how he remembered Noah in the boat. Noah and his family, along with creatures of the earth, were floating in the boat 40 days and 40 nights. God called Noah blameless before he sent him into the ark. Noah was God's child, and here he is, floating somewhat aimlessly with creatures of the earth. Did God forget Noah? Can God even forget? Well, even if he could forget, he didn't. He didn't forget Noah because God knew Noah's name. That is my point. Does God know your name? Are you able to call him father? That is the point where every human being needs to be, beloved ones. To be at the place where God is your father and God knows your name. That will give you the ultimate father. And happy Father's Day will take on a new meaning because of what it means to call God Father, that is what I commend all of us to seek and to find. May God bless you and help you to know him as Father. And then you'll be able to say, he knows my name. That's the song we're about to hear as we conclude our service today. God bless you.
I have a father, the song says, and he knows my name. My prayer for you today is that that will be true of you. Let's go now and honor the fathers in our lives and remember to seek the eternal father. God bless you. Amen.